Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're finally getting, I always end up saying that, I don't know why, but anyway today 13700K, the i7 13th generation processor from Intel. So a lot of people ask me at launch why I didn't have an i7 and it's because they weren't available for me at that moment in time. Intel contacted me last week, said would you like an i7? I obviously said yes because I'm interested in this stuff, this is why I do it. And uh, when it arrived, I got cracking straight away. Now the i7, uh, £475-ish. It still sounds like an awful lot of money. I can't get used to any of the current pricing when I say it out loud. But you get 8P cores, 8E cores. Uh, I kind of put this around the 5900X kind of territory. And uh, the 5900X is about a hundred pound more now the reason I know you now like but that's not fair on Intel because but they're, they're fairly similar uh, and I'm not trying to do that because it's like a price war thing not what I'm doing I'm just trying to find some sim similarities uh, the i9 is another well it's over 200 pounds more expensive so it's a big big step up if you want to go up to the i9 uh, now with the i7 uh, I was experiencing pretty much on the majority of the cores when loaded up, the P cores, at 5.3. But there are two that occasionally will flick up to 5.4. And that kind of sits in with the specs that uh, Intel give. And then you get about 4.2 on the E cores. Now, right from early on, I will talk to you about overclocking. Because I think with the current range of Intel processors that you actually can be rewarded for spending some time in the BIOS and playing around with things. I ended up being able to get 5.45 gigahertz on all of the P cores, so in the increase across all, no matter whether it was like big boost or little boost, because when fully loaded, they were running at about 5.15 for me. So then to go up to 5.45 is a decent uh, performance boost. And then I did get the uh, E cores up to 4.5 as well. Uh, with the MSI motherboard, I was using 1.275 volts, and that was complete stability at that point of 1.275. Uh, if you took out uh, literally using OCCT for uh, stability checks, uh, that was what needed 1.275. I could get all the blenders to pass, pug it, all the games, everything else was 100% stable and I didn't get any performance decreases from benchmarks at 1.25 volts, which made a fairly decent uh, difference in temperatures in that amazingly with the Intel stuff now, you can overclock it and drop your temps. Uh, I think we're gonna find in time that when we start playing with lapping and all that sort of thing that the temperatures are gonna come down even more, but I digress. When you drop it into graphs, now I will say, please like, subscribe, comment if you like this kind of stuff. Yes, I have a different approach to some of the others because I do talk an awful lot, but it's because I'm kind of going at it like a mate at a pub. But you can go to the OC3D website. There's loads more tests, loads more benchmarks. Might be easy for you to digest the graphs, or I'll, although we are constantly working on these to try and make you guys at home as happy as we can be. Um, but when you drop it into the graphs, Blender pops up and you can see the performance is actually fairly healthy. Uh, it sits in between with uh, Blender, in between a stock 7900X and an overclock 7900X, which is one of the reasons why I kind of started talking about that kind of performance point anyway. That and the fact that I know that the 7900X is technically Ryzen 9, uh, but I think it's... It's a good thing for us to attach to and aim for comparison wise, because otherwise we're gonna be talking about the 7700X and there's a considerable, perf uh, considerable um, uh, price difference there. But more often than not, there's actually a bigger uh, performance difference. They are actually, the 7900X, they are fairly, fairly close. When you go on to uh, Cinebench, as you can see here, again, they sit pretty much in and around uh, each other. 
Now, I know that the, like, the three main scores in the middle there are fairly close, uh, in that graph at least. Uh, but if you actually look at the numbers themselves, for Cinebench, 100 points difference is a fair bit. So in this, I'd say the overclocks are fairly close, but the stock in reality isn't. Now we can uh, power draw, with all due respect, if there was an award for using more power than this current generation, uh, Intel would definitely use it. Uh, use it, they would win it. Uh, but, um, or then again, use more power. So yeah, it does kind of make sense. But anyway, uh, as you can see, it pulls more power than an overclock 7950X and just, just many, many lots of power in reality. But you do need to remember with the uh, 7900X, there is obviously uh, different boosting and stuff on that compared to the uh, 7950. Games wise, it really depends on what game you're running. Uh, Cyberpunk, for example, as you can see in the graph, loves Intel. But then if you look at Total Warhammer, for example, and the reason why we run Total Warhammer is this is such a CPU limited game. It, whatever is going on with Total Warhammer loves AMD, which is exactly the reason why I want to show you both, because there isn't a clear winner in reality. It kind of depends what camp we're at. Uh, we do have Far Cry 6 results. We do have Rift Breaker results as well and many, many more on the website. Now, if it was me with the i7, what would I do? Well, I personally think that the i7 is a very nice middle ground between the five and the nine, which you don't need uh, a degree or like to even really have tested it to kind of work out why. But for me, the um, uh, five is very, very much just get it, game with it, enjoy it, but you have loads of overclocking if you can be bothered. The 9, mega hot, uses loads of power, need to spend loads of money on cooling, probably should be investing in DDR5 if you're going to buy it, uh, but you can obviously very, very healthily gain. It will at least try and keep up with the 4090, but at the same time, you're going to have content creation stuff. In the middle ground, the content creation stuff or the multi-core stuff on the i7 is isn't really a big problem. It does it very well for the price point compared to others at the price point. So it's not going to shame you away. You're going to be happy. But at the same time, it isn't a slouch within the games either. So that's why I say it's kind of a middle ground between content creation and gaming, and it does both very, very nicely. You are, though, still going to need decent cooling with it, not necessarily going to need to worry about your motherboards boiling up or anything like that, because as long as you're not using something with very low grade VRMs, you are actually going to be okay. Yes, we've got an expensive carbon, it's 550 pounds, which when you say that out loud, it kind of means you're spending a thousand pound on a CPU and a motherboard, but you don't necessarily have to go for the carbon. You could um, go down the ranks a bit or even go down to the, um, you could just upgrade from a reasonable Z690, for example, or we do kind of know that there's going to be a B series motherboard launch at some point. I'm actually kind of interested in that because I think the gray area between the five and the uh, sevens could be a really good match for the B series boards when they come out. It really depends if they ruin it with too much DDR5 and too much PCI Express 5. Uh, so, Good overclocking to be had, rewarding, nice stuff to do at weekends. Uh, one of the things I would advise though, if you are going to buy one of these and not overclock, is do an undervolt. Whether you do a static undervolt or whether you do uh, an undervolt with an offset, I cannot like stress to you enough, I think that would be a very good move to drop your temperatures down. All you need to do is do like, 0.025 or 0.05 off as a reduction. Go in, do a stability test. Do it again, do it again. Get to the point where you find instability, where it's not playing very nice. Go back to the last one. It's a very quick process. 
if you take your time and you're patient, you do it in two or three hours and you'll find some stability. But m most importantly, your temperatures will plummet. And it's going to mean that you're not going to need a turbo 360 to be able to keep it running. You'll be able to have uh, a good quality air cooler or an easy 240 millimeter on AIO, but critically without the fans blowing an absolute hooli. Yes, I will be doing uh, content on this for you soon, but I've got big piles of motherboards and lots of other things to do. So I'm trying to get through as much work as I can do before I then come and try and help you guys with things like that. But for now, data on the i7. Yes, it's a quick video, but it's quite a bit after launch. And I've done this just to be thorough, like I did with the uh, 7600X and the 7900X. So we're there now. We know what we're, we can expect from processors. Hopefully that will help you guys at home make decisions on where you might want to be spending your money because I'm not going to tell you where. I'm just going to give you the information and hopefully help you decide what's best for you because you're all different and that's the most important thing to remember. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment. There's loads of stupid stuff going on on Instagram a lot of the time and I am trying to be very, very on point with my followers on the Tiny Tom Logan Facebook page. So if you're interested, head over there and you never know what might be happening in the not too distant future because uh, there is a lot of stuff. That was great, Tom, that was. There is a lot of stuff that's been going on behind the scenes and I am going to be sharing some pretty cool stuff with you all soon. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you out. Ding! I don't know why I do that, but I know why I do that. Love you, sis.